What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to describe the end behavior of a polynomial function, right? And there's four cases, four different scenarios, but really you just need to know two and then you can kind of figure out the rest uh, relatively easily. So the first two that you're probably already familiar with is f of x is equal to x squared and f of x is equal to x cubed, okay? f of x is equal to x squared. This is a quadratic, right? So when you graph this, it's just a parabola, something like that, right? And um, f of x is equal to x cubed. This is a cubic function, right? So it looks something like that when you graph it. Okay, the main thing I want you, uh, first of all, to realize with f of x is equal to x squared is the exponent. So the exponent is a two, which is an even number, okay? So whenever you graph a polynomial function that has an even numbered exponent, it's always gonna look something like a parabola, right? Sometimes it'll look uh, something like that. It'll have like a blip in the middle, but in any case, we're more concerned with the ends of our function, right? So just because there's a blip in the middle, that's not a really big deal. They basically still kind of look the same, right? And similarly, with f of x is equal to x cubed, the exponent over here is an odd number, okay? So whenever you graph a polynomial function that has an odd numbered exponent, it's gonna look something like this, okay? And uh, similarly with this one, it could have a blip in the middle, all right? So it could look, you know, something like that, where it just kind of blips like that but it's still basically the same type of graph, right? Still this like curvy graph. And they both, in this case, slope in the positive direction, okay? Now the other two cases that we could have are f of x is equal to negative x squared and f of x is equal to negative x cubed, okay? So as you can see here, we now have uh, basically a negative coefficient, right? There's this negative one right here instead of having a positive one like we had up here. So whenever you have a positive leading coefficient, it opens up. And whenever you have a negative leading coefficient, well, you already know probably, hopefully, maybe. And if you don't, that's okay. This one opens down, okay? So again, we have an even exponent, so we know it's gonna look something like a parabola, and we have a negative uh, numbered coefficient over here, so that's why it opens down. And just like we had up here, this one could have, you know, some sort of blip in the middle like that. But again, it's still basically the same thing. Okay. And then here, f of x is equal to negative x cubed. Well, this, as you guessed it, would have a negative slope, right? Um, so it would look something like that, right? So now you can see, uh, let's use white. Now you can see it's basically sloping in the negative direction, right? Because we have a negative coefficient in front of it. When it was positive, like up here, we basically had a positive one, right? So that's why it sloped in the positive direction. But when it's negative, it slopes down, okay? And just like this one, it could have, you know, like a weird blip in the middle, something like that. But the overall trend of the slope is still downward like that. Okay, so now that we have an idea of what all these graphs look like, now let's talk about the end behaviors. So again, starting with this one up here, f of x is equal to x squared. All right, so as we move along the x-axis, right, towards positive infinity in this direction, uh, what is the function doing over here? Well, it's going up, right? It's going up towards positive infinity also, okay? So we can say that as we move along the x direction or as x approaches positive infinity, right, we can say as x approaches positive infinity, uh, the function, so f of x, we can say that f of x is also approaching positive infinity up here, right? Positive infinity, okay? So what is the other side of this function doing? Well, as x approaches negative infinity in this direction, right? So as x approaches negative infinity, what is the function doing? Well, it's also going up towards positive infinity up here, right? So the function is also approaching, just like on the other side, positive infinity, okay? Uh, what about the cubic function over here? f of x is equal to x cubed. Well, again, as we move along the x-axis, right? So uh, let's write it over here. So as x approaches positive 
infinity again, what is the function doing? Well, the function is curving up, right? It's going up towards positive infinity also. So we can say that the function is approaching positive infinity. Now, what about on the other side? So when x is approaching negative infinity, what's the function doing? Well, it's sloping down this way, right? Or the green, right? The green graph right there. It's moving down towards negative infinity. So on this side of the graph, we can say that as x approaches negative infinity, the function is also approaching, right? The function is also approaching negative infinity. Okay, and then these two down here are just going to be the basically opposite of these two up here, right? So if we're trying to describe again the end behavior of this one down here, um, as we move along the x direction towards positive infinity, right, as x approaches positive infinity, the function, what's the function doing? Uh, over here, it's approaching negative infinity, right, sloping all the way down down towards negative infinity down here. So the function is approaching negative infinity. And then it's the same thing on this side, right? So as x approaches negative infinity, right, uh, negative infinity, the function f of x approaches, just like on this side, right, it's going down towards negative infinity. So uh, the function approaches negative infinity. Okay, and then lastly over here, uh, f of x is equal to negative x cubed, right? So the end behavior over here, uh, let's talk about as x approaches positive infinity. So as, uh, and I'll read it over here. So as x approaches positive infinity, um, the, the whole graph is sloping down, right? And particularly this part right here, right? It's sloping down towards negative infinity down there. So the function is approaching negative infinity. Now, as the function, or sorry, as x approaches negative infinity, right? As x approaches negative infinity, on this side, you can see that the function is going up, right? Towards positive infinity. So on this side, the function goes up towards positive infinity, all right? So hopefully this made sense. Now we're just gonna go over a few examples to kind of just tie everything together. All right, so here's our first example. So here we have uh, f of x is equal to negative five x to the fourth plus seven x cubed minus six x squared plus nine x plus two. Okay, so as you can see, we have a bunch of terms that have a bunch of exponents, right? But the main thing that you wanna remember is the biggest exponent wins. That one rules everything else. All right, so in this case, that would be the four over here. So the term that is going to rule this entire polynomial function is this one right here. This is all we have to pay attention to. You can basically forget about the rest. So which function can we relate this to? Well, first of all, we have an even exponent, right? So that means it's gonna look something like a parabola, right? Because remember, f of x is equal to x squared. That looks something like that, okay? So uh, since we have a four, four is even, so we know it's gonna look like a parabola. Now, the other thing we have to look for is this leading number, the leading coefficient. So if it's positive, it's gonna open up like that, right? But if it's negative, like it is here, uh, just like with f of x is equal to negative x squared, it's gonna open down like that, okay? So this function, I don't even have to like graph a bunch of points or anything like that. I already know it's gonna look something like this bottom one right here, okay? And we're not trying to graph it exactly, right? Uh, again, there could be like that weird blip in the middle. doesn't matter. All we're really concerned about is with the end conditions, right? Or the end behaviors. So how could we describe the end behaviors of this whole polynomial function? So we can use just this graph right here. So again, as x approaches positive infinity, right? So as x approaches positive infinity, the function, what is the function doing? The function is going down, right? Towards negative infinity, right? Down in this direction. So the function approaches negative infinity. 
And then, so that's one end behavior. What about this end over here? What is this one doing? Well, on this one, we can say as x approaches negative infinity, right? As x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches negative infinity also, right? It's going down. Uh, the function also approaches negative infinity, okay? So those are our two end behaviors. Okay, here's h of x is equal to negative 2x to the 4th plus 12x to the 8th plus 17 minus 15x to the 7th, right? So again, we just want to look for the biggest exponent. So again, that would be an 8 in this case, right? 8 is an even number, so we know it's going to look something like a parabola. And we just need to figure out if it opens up or down. And that comes from our coefficient right here, which is a positive 12. So that means it's going to open up, right? So we know it's going to look something, uh, there we go, something like that. Okay, so again, if we want to describe the end behavior, we can say that uh, as x approaches positive infinity, right, as x approaches positive infinity, h of x, the function h of x approaches positive infinity, right, whoops, that's a gross looking arrow, uh, positive infinity in that direction, right, positive infinity also. And as x approaches negative infinity, so as we go this way, the function is still going up towards positive infinity, right, so h of x approaches positive infinity also, right? So those are our two end behaviors here. All right, last one here. So a of x is equal to 69 minus 18x squared minus 5x to the fifth minus 12x to the fourth, all right? So again, the biggest exponent is what we wanna find first. So that's a five in this case. So we know it's gonna look something like a cubic function. And uh, we can draw this out. Right? And then the other thing we have to figure out or look at is the leading coefficient, which in this case is a negative 5. Right? So instead of sloping up like that, since we have a negative number, we know it's going to slope down in that direction. Right? So we can draw something like that. Yeah, that's good. Now let's talk about the end behaviors. So as we approach positive infinity, right? so as x approaches positive infinity, the slope is approaching negative infinity, right? So uh, a of x, the function, is approaching negative infinity, all right? And then as x approaches negative infinity, right? As x approaches negative infinity, our function a of x uh, looks like it's approaching positive infinity, right? Going up. A of x is approaching positive infinity, right? So those are our two end behaviors right there. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.